Guys, you need to get into the sauna because there is significant research about why they are so beneficial. You ain't been doing the education. You don't realize I'm so frustrated. You ain't got the answer. You ain't got the answer. You see, muscle hypertrophy and bodybuilding is not just about how much muscle you put on. If your poor diet, lack of sleep, lack of recovery, means that your protein degradation or breakdown is actually higher than your protein accumulation. If the breakdown is outweighing what you build, then you're never going to get any significant muscle gain because it's all about net protein synthesis. The balancing act between skeletal muscle breakdown and skeletal muscle growth. If the net protein synthesis is positive, then you are going to get growth. And why are saunas so important? It's because heat acclimation or use of saunas significantly improves three vectors of anabolic muscle recovery. There are three main mechanisms. The first mechanism, is that it improves insulin sensitivity. Now, insulin plays an important role in muscle hypertrophy via two mechanisms. Firstly, insulin allows more amino acids to get into muscle cells and start their repair process, i.e. building more muscle cells. And it also inhibits proteasome, which is a key enzyme whose usual job is to break down muscle, but when this is inhibited, you get less breakdown of muscle and therefore you hold on to the muscle that you already have. And this is the idea behind using saunas as a way of heat conditioning to be incredibly anabolic. Insulin resistant diabetic mice were subjected in this study to 30 minutes of heat treatment for three times a week for 12 weeks. And this resulted in a 31% decrease in insulin resistance and big reductions in blood glucose, essentially meaning that the rats became more sensitive to insulin. And overall, the idea is that if you use saunas in your recovery regime, you can sensitize your body to insulin better and therefore reap the anabolic benefits very strongly, allowing more insulin to enter the cells and inhibiting the major protein degrading enzyme therefore improving your NPS and making it more positive than it would be without saunas. The second mechanism is by turning on heat shock proteins. All right, so when you train heavy, you're creating a lot of damage to the muscle cells. And cellular work like this creates a lot of free radicals, which are byproducts of exercise. Byproducts such as superoxide and hydrogen peroxide are really damaging to the body and put a lot of what's called oxidative stress onto the body, especially endurance runners who are using a lot of ATP and have a high volume of contraction repeatedly over many, many hours are going to have a lot of free radicals floating around their body and a lot of oxidative stress. But the thing is, oxidative stress is a huge factor in muscle protein breakdown. So any way we can stop the muscle protein breakdown and the free radical accumulation is going to be indirectly very anabolic for creating and keeping the muscle mass we already have. Heat shock proteins are a way to do this. Exposing the body to intermittent heat produces a stress response and the body acclimatizes to this stress response by turning on heat shock proteins. In fact, a gene called heat shock factor one turns on heat shock proteins and these have important roles in the body and can directly prevent damage in muscle tissue by scavenging free radicals and essentially neutralizing them. They can also repair misfolded proteins which have a lot of potential in cancer research and there's a frontier of researching heat shock proteins for future cancer research breakthroughs. But basically even 30 minutes of exposure to heat can turn on a number of key heat shock proteins. And when they're turned on, it's shown that you can gain up to 30% more muscle hypertrophy over those who don't engage in heat exposure. And not only this, but the heat shock proteins remain turned on for 48 hours after exposure. Therefore, you get a very long exposure window. So therefore, using heat exposure to turn on the heat shock proteins could be very anabolic, allowing them to remove oxidative stress from the body, repair misfolded proteins, and, and allow you to train harder with more results. But the most important factor and the third mechanism by which saunas are anabolic is they increase growth hormone in a huge way you get a massive increase in growth hormone. Now, growth hormone is directly anabolic, turning on mTOR, increasing protein synthesis via activation of mTOR, which is a huge regulatory pathway with a number of effects. But the one we are interested in is the anabolic pathway. mTOR, when turned on, is the way that the body directly creates new muscle cells and lays down muscle fibers. Growth hormone turns mTOR on, but it also inhibits muscle protein breakdown through the FOXO pathway. And studies have been stacking up about how powerful saunas are at turning on growth hormone. Two 20 minute sauna sessions at 80 degrees, which is approximately 176 Fahrenheit, separated by 30 minute cooling period, elevated growth hormone levels to twofold over baseline. Two 15 minute sauna sessions at 100 degrees, 212 Fahrenheit, resulted in a fivefold increase in growth hormone.
and two one hour sauna sessions at 80 degrees Celsius or 176 Fahrenheit for seven days, increased growth hormone by 16 fold. That's 16 times higher levels of growth hormone than at baseline, which is absolutely huge for building muscle. So if that hasn't sold you already, there are the non-anabolic effects of saunas, which are actually very promising for longevity. In flies and worms, a brief exposure to heat treatment has been shown to increase their lifespan by about 15%. And it's shown that this effect is mainly attributed to the turning on of heat shock proteins. Whether this would translate to humans is a bit up for debate, but it's very interesting nonetheless that in smaller organisms, heat shock proteins turned on actually increases lifespan significantly. Saunas also decrease cortisol and increase norepinephrine. One study demonstrated that men that stayed in the sauna that was heated to 80 degrees Celsius until subjective exhaustion increased norepinephrine by 310%. Not only this, but they had a tenfold increase in prolactin. In another study, women that spent 20 minute sessions in a dry sauna twice a week had an 86% increase in norepinephrine and a 510% increase in prolactin. Why is this important? Norepinephrine directly helps the brain with focus and attention, while prolactin increases myelin growth, essentially making your brain work faster and more efficiently, as well as increasing its ability to repair nerve cell damage. And along the same lines, it can also increase BDNF, which causes the growth of new brain cells, as well as improves the ability for you to retain more information. And it has been linked to depression and anxiety improvements as well in the literature. So there you have it. Very anabolic, very good for the brain. Saunas, you need to get into them. I was a bit hesitant about the research and didn't really think there was much there but when you dig deep you find that saunas can be very beneficial i would highly recommend 30 minute sessions about two to three times per day maybe three to four days every single week if you can get into the sauna it would be huge for your uh, recovery and yeah in terms of growth hormone heat shock proteins and insulin sensitivity for building muscle they actually are very strong mechanisms with a lot of research behind it and i would highly recommend to get in the sauna as quickly as you can and i think it will be a really beneficial way for you to increase your muscle recovery growth and endurance so you can train harder faster and longer thank you so much for watching guys fitness science i will see you in the next video